Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Photolia, Europe's best royalty-free stock photos, vectors, and video. In this video for Photoshop beginners, we'll be taking a look at how to remove a white background from your images from Photolia. Let's jump in and see how it's done. Okay, here I am in Photoshop, and I've got several layers that I'm going to be playing with. I've got a clock here. I've got a thumbs up from social media and I've got a couple of instances of the Photolia logo. So let's go and select the top one here and make it visible. Now what I want to do here is make everything in the logo visible, but I want to be able to see through into Starburst. Now most importantly, what I don't want to do is go and get the eraser tool. It is available, but I haven't used the eraser tool for years. I would strongly advise that you don't either. So we're not going to be using the eraser tool. We're going to keep all our pixels intact just in case we make a mistake or we want to return to how it was when we started. Right, so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to move over to the right hand side of this layer where there's a blank space and I'm going to double click. And we get this layer style dialog box come up. A bit we're interested in is this bit down the bottom. It's called blend if and you'll see that we're already on gray by default. And we want to work with the whites and this is all part of the grayscale in Photoshop so that's absolutely perfect. You'll notice there's an arrow to the right where it says this layer and in fact where it says underlying layer but we're only interested in this layer so blend if this layer is white but at the moment it's right at this very edge so all we need to do is just nudge this across. I'm going to click on it and just start dragging over to the left hand side. Click and drag and sure enough it pops it away. What it's done is it's blended all that white down into the layers below it, in which case we have just our starburst visible, so that's what it's blended it to. And we're done. OK. Now this works well because there's only white that we want to get rid of. There's no white in the logo itself, which works really well. But let's have a look at another way that we could have selected that. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of this one, turn the visibility of the one on below it, and select it. Now what I want to do is make a selection of the logo. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to Select and Color Range. This will allow me to make a selection of a particular color. At the moment it's selected white, but I can easily come down and just click on the green and you'll see it adds green to it. If I wanted to add more greens, I could hold down the Shift and click and drag and you'll notice it adds more to it. Actually, that's not the quickest way of doing it. The quickest way here is to select what we don't want and reverse it. So I'm just going to come up into the white and click. And it selects all the white, including what's within the logo and in the O's and the A there. And that's because I haven't got localized color clusters selected. OK, let's click OK there. Now, like I say, we've selected everything except the logo and we want that to be selected. Easy enough, select and inverse. And now we have the logo selected. I can tell it's selected because it has what we call marching ants going around it. Kind of like these dotted lines. Right, let's come down to the bottom of the layer palette now and you'll see there's an icon. It's a white rectangle with a black circle in it and this is to add a layer mask. So I'm going to click on that and sure enough it's masked away everything that wasn't selected. So it's kept what we had selected and masked away everything that we didn't. And we can see the mask on this layer. So everything that's white, we've kept. Everything that's black, we've hidden. And I stress we've hidden. We've not done anything to the pixels on this layer at all. We've just hidden them away. That was simple enough. Let's turn the visibility of this layer off and turn the visibility of this one on and select it and you can see that this one comes from Photolia as well there'll be a link somewhere around I should imagine okay now this one is going to be a bit more tricky it's an irregular shape and we've got white within what we want to select so we can't use either of the tricks that we've have done previously no problem let's go over to the toolbar and this time I'm going to select the quick selection tool now, if you haven't got the quick selection tool handy, it may be hidden underneath the magic wand tool. 
Just click and hold on the magic wand until you get the fly out menu and then choose quick selection tool. And what you'll end up with is this circle with a cross in it, a plus sign. We're going to be adding to a selection. So we're going to make a selection ourselves this time. And what we need to do is just click down and start dragging with the mouse button still pressed down, of course. So click and start dragging. And you can see that Photoshop actually tries to find the edges. So it's done a pretty good job there. It's certainly got the cuff here pretty easily. So let's move in. I've still got my mouse button pressed down. Move into this white. Again, it snaps, trying to find the edges. It hasn't got the blue outline though. So let's move in there. And sure enough, it snaps to that as well. Let's unclick. So now we've got our selection. And once again, we can come down and choose to mask it. And that's all well and good. Except one thing, the button on the cuff. You'll notice that it hasn't selected that and therefore it's masked it away. No problem at all. We can alter this, of course, it's non-destructive. So I'm gonna go over and get my brush. I get my brush tool and I'm gonna make sure it's not too big, about 100 pixels, maybe 120 is fine for this particular image. I don't want it too big. I don't have to worry about the hardness at this particular stage. But I do want to have white as my foreground color. And at the moment, black is my foreground color. I can press D on the keyboard to get the default colors, which is white as the foreground, black as the background. Perfect. Now making sure that my mask is selected, I've got these lines around the corners of my mask in the layers palette. I can come onto my image and start painting with white. And there we go. I've painted away that black spot within the mask to bring back the button on the cuff. Easy. Right, let's turn this one off and turn my clock on. Again, this is a Photolia image. And we've got a couple of issues now. We've got white as the background and white in the image, but you notice it's a regular shape. So maybe we could select this ourselves. Let's give it a go. I'm going to get the elliptical marquee tool and then I can draw out a circle. Now you'll notice, if you can see it, that I'm actually drawing kind of an off circle, an oval as it were. If I hold the shift key down, it constrains it to a perfect circle. And then if I press the space bar as well, we can start moving it into place. And this is a very tricky thing to do and takes a lot of practice. I'm pressing the space bar again, and then I'm coming back out and I'm drawing it a bit further and then I'm space barring again. It does take a lot of practice, but it's worth doing. I'm going to command or control D to deselect. I know where the center of this circle is. It's about here, which means I can add yet another keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to start click and then Alt to draw from the middle and then shift to constrain it as a circle. And I can now drag it out and that's made the job a little bit easier, but still not as easy as it has been in the past, of course. But there we go. Now I've got my selection and I can make a mask on that just as we did before. Now, if you're not used to drawing out selections, don't panic. We'll cover that in a later video. But for now, just know that you can. Of course, I could have used a quick selection tool, maybe going around the outside and reversing the selection like we did back with the Photolia logo. But as I say, more of that some other time. I hope this has been a help. Don't forget to come and find us on social media, of course. My name's Eric Reno. You'll find me at tipsquirrel.com, as well as a whole host of social media sites. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.